All right, well, let's get this thing going. Um, if you don't mind hitting the next slide for us. Uh, real quick, session topics, we'll kind of, and again, super casual, but I want to just kind of give you a rundown. Introduction, we'll introduce the real reason why you guys are here. Nobody wants to hear me blab. Um, what is bike ball? Why does it matter? Why is it important to you? Um, you know, challenges of bimodal transportation, right? It, you know, in, in the, the U.S. culture, it's a little bit different than the European culture. And so we'll kind of break down some of the challenges or, and we'll really kind of lead the charge on explaining all this stuff. I'm just kind of doing the nice soft intro here. Um, things for everybody to know, right? So again, as a cyclist, from the cyclist perspective, from the driver's perspective, like these are just, let's be more conscious, be more intentional, be more, you know, thoughtful about things that I should, maybe I need to be a little bit more aware of that. Um, specific laws. This is clearly my strong point uh, between the dynamic duo <laughs> here. Uh, so again, we'll, we'll let in uh, speak to that. Additional information, there's tons of resources out there. So um, when, when we talked earlier, um, you know, obviously just a wealth of knowledge, but there's tons of other resources out there too. So I um, want to give you guys some of that so you guys can, can do some of your homework on your own. We do have, um, we'd have a hard stop with Ann at, at, at eight o'clock. So we'll, we'll um, try and get through some of this stuff. We do want to have a Q&A at the end. Um, I'll stick around afterwards and, um, and make up answers to stuff I don't know, <laughs> uh, if you guys want. Uh, but we'll make sure we leave some time for some Q&A here at the end. And of course, we'll kick off a few more raffle prizes. So anyway, without further ado, our special guest. <laughs> I, I love this, this is a great picture. By the way, um, <laughs> lifelong cyclist and an and advocate for uh, for the sport and for the transportation, bike law uh, founder and a lawyer for North Carolina and Utah, um, author of the Ride Guide, which we'll talk a little bit about later, um, and the email address is up there. So if you guys have any questions, we're kind of kind of opening up your email inbox. So hopefully that's that's right. That's okay. Yeah, for you. absolutely. So, so anyway, so uh, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen. Miss Ann Groninger. Hey! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for coming thanks. again. Yeah, thanks for having me. This is great. All right, cool. Can so, I uh, can I talk a little bit about this slide, actually? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So I did. I was the original. I mean, I'm the founder of North Carolina Bike Law now, Utah, very recently, which I haven't done much in. But uh, Bike Law, the national, was originally founded by uh, an attorney in South Carolina, Peter Wilborn, and the, this is, I think, why Bike Law became the special really entity that it is and, and um, you know part of it's because we're all cyclists and it's not just one of those networks that you pay money into every year and become a member of it was founded Peter founded it back in 1998 and we have kits now that have 1998 on it and people always ask what does that mean uh, his brother was killed in a bike crash and it, in Wyoming and as the lawyer in the family Peter was a labor lawyer at the time and he was tasked with the job of finding, uh, you know, a, a lawyer for the family to represent them in their uh, in his brother's death. And everywhere he went, the lawyers would ask him things like, "Well, why was he riding a bike? Did he have a DUI?" <laughs> you know, they just couldn't believe that this grown man would be riding a bike. And he thought, "Well, this is ridiculous. We need lawyers to advocate for bicyclists that understand cycling." So he was the original founder of it in 2005. We together founded uh, Bike Law North Carolina. A little bit there more history go. there. A little, little background. Yeah. Cool. Um, Debbie, if you don't mind. So again, I'm going to probably <laughs> start to shut up here a little bit, uh, which is great for you guys. Did but, I write um, that at some point? What's that? Did I write that at some at some point? Unfortunately, we don't write bikes all day. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of took some liberties when I was putting this together. I think we'd all love to just ride bikes all day. Like, man, it's a, what do you do for a living? Not just ride bikes all day. I don't think it's as simple as that, though. Yeah. So if you don't mind sharing what, you know, what is bike law? Why it's important, and uh, and and what exactly you know what exactly the organization is there for? Yeah, well now you know how it was founded, and um, I know some people that look at my Instagram ask me if I ride bikes all day, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I work a lot, um, but prim I mean primarily what we do, and and it was born out of that need for bicyclists to have attorneys who understand bicycling. You know, primarily what I do every day is represent cyclists, and. Uh, it varies greatly from day to day. Today, I spent half an hour talking to a potential client about his um, 
history and cycling. It was and it was so great. He you know was telling me that he was in Ram, did a race across America, and just all these celebrity bicyclists that he's ridden with over the years. He was a little bit older guy. Um, so that's a really cool part of my job, you know, just talking to and, and meeting cyclists. But you know, a lot of times I'm in the courtroom, or even that's a fun part. What's less fun is just litigation, answering, you know, doing the paperwork, <laughs> you know, answering questions that other side that other, asks and stuff. But side. yeah, so I mean, I spend a lot of time just being a, a lawyer, but it's all. Um, you know, and meshed with my cycling experience and my love of cycling and my love of working with cyclists and, you know, obviously all different kinds of cyclists. Some of them are, you know, even dabbled in professional cycling all the way to, you know, somebody who maybe just picked up a bike that they found in their garage to ride to a <laughs> friend's house, right? So anybody who's who was on a bike, that's what we care about. And, uh, you know, as a result of that and seeing a need for it, I've been involved in some organization as time allows. I'm on the board of Bike Walk NC, which is our statewide advocacy group. I always have to put in a plug for Bike Walk NC. They do our director, Terry Lansdell, is in the legislature all the time. He's our voice with uh, you know, the North Carolina state legislators and uh, really does good work and would love to be able to go and say that he represents thousands of cyclists across the state. So please become a member. Mm -hmm. of Bike Walk NC. I'm on the board of that group. Um, I don't know, just little things in the community here and there. I do a lot of this stuff, going and talking to groups about their rights and answering questions and um, trying to educate people on the law because going out there with an understanding of, of you know, what to expect if something mm -hmm. happens is, is really helpful. Uh, so that, that's the education, education part. So we'll get into some of that. Um, but that's that's kind of the breakdown. <laughs> Probably ninety percent of the day is spent being a lawyer. So this is one of the things yeah. I'm super interested in. Like again, we all, you know, I think the the non legal side of things, we may not be anywhere remotely close to some of the challenges that that you see on an ongoing basis. And so I think, you know, this this stuff is just super super interesting to me. So I'm, yeah. you can tell I'm like a kid in a candy shop. I'm like, Man, this is so <laughs> What's next? What well, please ask me learn? specific questions because I look at this list and I think, you know, a lot of this is pretty self-explanatory. Mm -hmm. I mean, definitely the biggest thing is increased distraction. And everybody yeah. knows that. And especially if you're a cyclist, if you roll up at a bike lane alongside, you know, a row of cars, everybody's on their phone, especially mm -hmm. especially if they're stopped. But a lot of times when they start rolling, too. Yeah. So, I mean, that's been a big that's been a really big thing not just for bicyclists, but anyone who uses a road, you know, there's obviously an increase in distracted driving and increase in crashes and, because of that. And, and how have you seen, I mean, obviously, you know, this has been going on, or you've been in this industry for a while, but I'm, I'm assuming that's something that has really kind of ramped up over the past 10 years or so. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, obviously as cell phones have become more yeah, and more yeah. capable, drivers have become less mm -hmm. capable. Um, and it was funny when I, I took back in the early 2000s and I took my first League of American Bicyclists road course, um, they said that the biggest, um, you know, the, the most frequent type of crash was intersection collision, which made sense because, you know, there, there often is a lack of communication and, and car drivers don't, if, if they see bicyclists, you know, if, if they're looking for them and see them, sometimes there's miscommunication about what, you know, what each person's gonna do. Uh, so that totally makes sense, and, but and this is just anecdotal. In my practice, over the years, I've seen more and more, um, you know, rear-end collisions, yeah. and uh, that can only really be explained by, you know, somebody looking at is, their phone. Have you seen, or have you, have, have you seen any trend or theme with, you know, the whole um, automated driving? I mean, has that kind of yeah. has that changed anything from what you've been able um, to see? Oh, that's kind of obviously yeah. that's a new kind of um, thing that's coming up. And, there's been a lot of talk about it, but yeah. I haven't. I haven't really seen that reflected okay. anywhere. I just bought a new car, and I had a 12-year-old car, so <laughs> it was uh, pretty uh, eye-opening what's yeah. out there now. But no, I haven't. That hasn't I'm really. I'm sure there's not like a ton of data on that either yet yeah. to kind of fully understand what that exactly. If, if there's a negative, you know, aspect to that at all. I mean, we can get all into, you know, if there is a crash and a lawsuit, how you can get that information from the car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, yeah. so, we, so there's that. But um, I haven't really seen that reflected in the types of crashes. So from, from, from kind of the seat that you sit, what's kind of been the, you know, if you get a random call or an email, what's kind of the, the most common thing that you're hearing from people of 
what do I do? How do I move forward within the process? Or what, what's kind of the most consistent thing that you hear when people are reaching out to you? Well, um, I'm sure it's all over the board. It is. It's, it's kind of all over the board. And I will say, because I, I really don't like to scare people. I mean, I ride. I, you know, I ride on the road. I, I, you know, ride just commuting, and I ride recreationally, despite what I do. And you know, I see the worst of it, of course. But mm -hmm. but I, you know, most of the people I talk to have some fairly minor injuries, mm -hmm. and I give them some advice and send them on their way. Uh, you know, it's people that have more serious injuries where they really, where I say, I think you really need help, you know, mm -hmm. to um, decipher everything because it's going to be a much longer process. But, you know, if somebody just, say, goes to an urgent care or, which mm -hmm. really happens a lot. Um, yeah. I don't know if we're just really tough <laughs> or okay. maybe there's, you know, slower, Helmet slower collisions, things like that. Helmet really well. Yeah, that's, that's true. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, probably I would say maybe even up to 50% of the people that call me, I just, we just give them advice and, you know, help them handle the process on their own. Yeah. But, but it's yeah. always dealing with an insurance company. You know, that's, that's, almost, that's, big thing? that's yeah. almost, almost always the case. Yeah, you make an insurance claim for your bike and for your, then down the road for your injuries. And uh, that's what we do. Well, and I know we'll, I think there's a piece in this here a little bit later, but that is a big aspect of um, when we were talking earlier is, is reviewing insurance policies and understanding what's covered and yeah, what's not covered yeah. on the on the personal side personal liability uh, property liability all that kind of stuff so i don't I mean i know we'll talk about that a little bit later so maybe we'll hold off on that but that is another thing that you know it's kind of a i didn't really even think about that but uh -huh. like well yeah maybe you should that may yeah. not be a bad idea to think about that and understand what that policy covers and, and does not cover so mm -hmm. um well, so, you know, this, this third point here, most U.S. cities haven't been built with, a, with bicycling in mind. And so, you know, that's something that I think, you know, there's, you know, we're obviously here in Charlotte. Obviously, there's viewers that are going to be watching this all over the place. But we're, you know, we're, we've got organizations here that are advocating for, you know, more bike lanes, protected bike lanes, all that stuff. You know, Sustain Charlotte's an organization here in town that is a, a strong advocate for that. And so... You know, that's just something where, you know, not that I'm the most worldly person in the world, but it's, you know, we're, especially in the U.S., I mentioned earlier, the U.S. culture is not kind of, it, it's, that's kind of on the back burner, right? Mm -hmm. It's just like, well, eh, out of sight, out of mind. It's <clears throat> auto-focused. And so that's a bit of a thing that I certainly don't have the, the solution or the answer for that, but that's something that, you know, is a, a big issue in my opinion. And I think that's something we've got to just kind of be a little bit more conscious of that. And so it's great to have local advocacy, advocacy groups that are out there saying, well, yeah, there's more than just auto-focused, you know, lifestyles. That we've, we've got to be developing and building in more sustainable ways. And that is through the form of, you know, where are the, where's the grocery store? How far do I have to go for that? Where are the parks? Where are the greenways? You know, all these kind of bike lanes, all this kind of stuff. So we're fortunate to have an organization here in in Charlotte with Sustain Charlotte, and um, you know, I, I can't speak to other other areas out of, out of town um, from Charlotte, but you know, support those organizations. They're there to help all of us in the advocacy work. You know, we personal Adam probably can't do too too much, but I can support those that are better prepared to fight those battles. And mm -hmm. so I think that's a that's my personal you know kind of soapbox deal there a little bit. But um, I think that's just one thing that is very it's very. It's just really kind of important to be to be mindful of. So, well, you know, you're on, on your third point there. You're you're right. Um, there, you know, we we're such a car culture. And if you think about, you know, what place in the U.S. has the most people commuting by bikes? I mean, I don't know. Is it Portland or something mm -hmm. like that? I and mean, even that is, you know, way less than ten percent, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, and that's supposed to be this mecca. But but you know, we do see. You know, over the past 20 years or so, you start seeing more, instead of just building out suburbs and suburbs and suburbs, you start seeing more of this kind of community-oriented mm -hmm. structure where, okay, yeah, we're going to build a suburb, but we're going to build it around a grocery store and amenities mm -hmm. and things like that. So there is a little bit more um, of that. And then, you know, you're seeing greenways and things popping up. I was just in Durham last week, and that tobacco... Uh, trail that goes all the way down to Cary and across yeah. over to Raleigh. I mean, that's pretty impressive. So, yeah. so you are starting to see, and, and people use them. If you go on the Little mm -hmm. Sugar Creek Greenway, it's just like, you know, everyone's like, where has this been all my life? Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, you go out yeah. there on the weekend, and there's tons of people out riding and walking and everything. So, 
it's doable. Uh, you know, I I was in Germany during college in the 80s, and I lived in Munich at the time, and and really not a lot of people riding bikes. You know, there's a lot of public transportation because mm -hmm. it was a you know European cities are really tight and everything, um, but but not a lot of bikes. And I went back in 2016 was the first time I went back in Munich, and the city was just packed with bikes, <laughs> packed, and everybody, and it wasn't recreational biking, there was some of that, but, you know, it was, uh, you know, a woman riding to work in a suit on her bike and stuff yeah. like that, and, and you know, grandmothers in, in their dresses going to visit their friends, and I thought, I mean, if that's possible here in, yeah. in just, um, I don't know, 40, less than 40 years, surely we can get there one day, right? We gotta, we gotta, yeah. we gotta hang on to hope, yeah. that's for sure. I mean. It'll take planning. I'm not a planning expert. Well, and it, and it, and it, and <laughs> I'm no, an that, idea expert. <laughs> <laughs> that's my point. It kind of takes all of us. Like this conversation here is part of that bigger conversation that we right. have to continue to have. And so, you know, my uh, my call to action for everybody, you know, here and 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 listening is, hey, be be an advocate, be proactive in in supporting that and and finding ways to kind of, you know, do what you can to help push that narrative forward a little bit more. So. Um, mm -hmm. Anyway, I don't want to get, again, I'm, I'm probably going to get all soapboxy here, but anyway. <laughs> we need some soapboxy. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Um, helpful things to know. So, um, again, you guys can kind of read this here. But, um, this one, I think, is, is you know, we kind of take things for granted right? on the daily basis, right? Whether we're driving or riding or whatever it is or, or walking, right? But these are kind of some, some super quick overarching kind of things, but um, uh, would love to obviously kind of hear some of your perspective on, on some of this stuff. I know like, especially now with, you know, I'm looking at the second bullet point there on the cyclist and I started to kind of do this in my own personal riding is, you know, the technology is advancing so much and so cool. Let's use that to our advantage. So mm -hmm. having, you know, whether it be a front camera, rear camera, whatever it is, that just provides, those those resources haven't been there in the past and so if something does happen that's a great opportunity to have that you know empirical data to say hey this is exactly what happened and so um you know when it comes down to a you know word versus word thing it's nice to have <laughs> it's nice yeah. to have some evidence in there that uh, they can kind of help strengthen the argument a little bit so um, again these are kind of some super super basic things, but um, would love to kind of hear maybe some thoughts or, or some ideas of things that like, oh, you know what, I hadn't really thought about that from the cyclist's perspective or, or from mm -hmm. the driver's perspective that are good to kind of be, you know, keep top of mind. Yeah, oh, I mean, I'll go through your list here on, on the first one. You know, that's a little bit of a tough one because, you know, sometimes your only way to get somewhere mm -hmm. and you're, if you're riding to work or something like that, maybe your only way to get somewhere is, is on that busy road or whatever mm -hmm. and I, I don't want to ever tell anybody that you know you're on this busy road so you, you deserve to be hit basically that you know the driver that's looking down at their phone and hits you from behind oh it's your fault because you were on the busy road you know I mm -hmm. hear stuff like that as a, as a lawyer um, so but yeah I mean use common sense if you're out in your spandex and for a group ride or something like that don't go down uh, mm -hmm. I don't know down the middle of Freedom Drive maybe. yeah right exactly <laughs> um, at 5 five thirty. Yeah. so um, yeah, the front and the cameras are really interesting. Uh, obviously, that's something that's uh, picked up over time with more, more and more people using camera. But I'll tell the story. I got three calls within a few months of a, the almost exact same case from three different people. It was a right hook. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think two, all three of them were riding in a bike lane. And so North Carolina has this terrible contributory negligence law, which I'll talk about that later. <laughs> um, but anyway, the insurance companies always argue that the bicyclist is at fault in some way. So, you know, in all three cases, the bicyclist is riding along in the bike lane and the driver um, comes around them and cuts them off, making a right turn. And the bicyclist hits the side of the car when well, the insurance adjuster says, well, the bicyclist hit the car. Um, surely they have some fault. Mm -hmm. And one of the three people had a video camera and when you watched that video, it was so obvious that it was the driver's fault because, you know, you see the car coming up alongside him and you don't know what she's going to do. She doesn't, there's, you can't see a signal or anything. And all of a sudden, she, as she, right as she passes him, she goes, hmm. like that. And then she told the, her insurance adjuster that 
Uh, he ran into her in the parking lot. Like, n completely really? different story. <laughs> totally yeah. different. Yeah. And then George just didn't know we had the video, so we were like, well, what's that story again? Um, anyway, so that yeah. case settled, boom, like no time. And the other two were just a huge fight because yeah. we didn't have documentation. But I do always tell people if you have a video and you want to use it, make sure you're in the right, too. Yeah, right, <laughs> yeah. exactly. So it can cut both ways. Well, it, keep, it, it keeps everyone honest, right? Yes. And that's the idea, yeah. right? Which is, yeah. If, if, if the cyclist is at fault, well then, yeah, let's keep ourselves accountable as well. Yeah, so. I mean, it is great to have, and we say hit and runs and things like that mm -hmm. too, so, yeah. yeah. Cool. Can I ask a quick question? Yeah, for sure. Um, do you have, because I know there's, with that great technology comes a great price, so do you have recommendations yeah. for like budget-friendly camera options, or if you can only afford to get a front or a rear, like what would you recommend? Uh, Jeff is nodding like he has some budget-friendly recommendations. <laughs> They're out there. You can find cameras. You don't have to spend $200 or more. Um, Amazon, there are a lot of off-brand uh, little cube cameras that work just as well. Some that you, I, I did a training class in Florida with a gentleman that had been using the same camera for 20 years. And it was a fifteen dollar camera. That we bought. <laughs> wow! We find that we got to find that one. I did not realize. That's <laughs> impressive. Look, you can find those, some of these smaller cute cameras that will do a good job for you, and sometimes for less than fifty bucks. So I think he just uh, mooted the second question. I don't think I have to answer front or rear because yeah, you can yeah. buy yeah, one. Yeah. <laughs> you can spend thirty dollars and get both. Yeah. Um, don't you don't have to get sucked into all the hype of you you know you need to buy this two hundred. You don't have more eight K quality. Yeah, you don't need you don't need you know yeah. GoPros eight K K yeah. quality. You just need something that's going to yeah. get right. the basic quality. And I would recommend having something with an SD card that backs it up. Yeah. Um, it's an onboard SD card that you're not just recording in the moment to your phone or streaming right. it. Um, always make sure you have that backup memory on it. You yeah. know, so look for something like that. Like Jeff said, Amazon you can get stuff super cheap. If you have to choose between, if, if you can get one cheap one and one nice one, get the nice one for the front, I would think, because um, if somebody does come by you and, and not stop, then it'll, it can get the license plate, since we don't have front yeah. license Do you think plates. the better quality should be in the front? That was going to be my question. Yeah, only because of that. Yeah, that's a good really. point. Yeah, not all um, states have a front license plate. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Hmm. So. Well, and I think, you know, another thing on this oh. is, you know, especially for you know, folks that are not in the immediate Charlotte area or, or in North Carolina. I mean, obviously, the one of the most important things is understanding the, the local law, wherever you are, right? Because they are, they do vary clearly, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> drastically. Well, uh, yeah, and a lot of things like uh, a big one is sidewalk riding, you know, mm -hmm. where you're yeah. allowed to ride on the sidewalk. That varies by um, town to town, and there, there's no state rule on it. So mm -hmm. um, that's kind of a big one. I mean, most, most of the traffic rules are statewide, but that is one that, and, and so of course then there's an issue with crosswalks and a lot of places have crosswalks connecting Greenway exits and entrances. And so then, you know, what's the legalities there? Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, and most of the time you're allowed to ride on the sidewalk yeah. on, on your bike, so. Well, and that's part of that being proactive is kind of, you know, hey, no one's going to spoon feed you, right? You've got to be a little bit more proactive to understand what the what those local legalities are. So. We're we're close to South Carolina, and they have a mandatory bike lane law mm -hmm. that we don't have here. Yeah. So you could, if, like, if you're in Fort Mill, right? Yeah. So that's a law difference that you would have to be aware of. So yeah. Yeah. The Especially here. Yeah. 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 Crossing yeah. state lines so is. Got to yeah. be in the bike lane. If there's, if a, there's a bike lane there, there's some ways to oh, work around. Formal to use. Yeah. Yeah. But a cop could stop you and write you a ticket if you want. Yeah. Yeah, or if you get in a crash and you're not in the bike lane, then you could be out of luck. Yeah. That was gonna. I was actually gonna ask about that. I think uh, aren't we one of a handful of states that don't have that requirement? Yeah, I don't know if it's a handful, but there. Are, I definitely. I mean, I know South Carolina and, and Michigan has a required. Um, required three without mandatory. Okay. Yeah, yeah we're. Three um, Interesting. We gotta hold on. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, well cool. Yeah. Um, Dad, if do you, you want, want me to wait? Do you want notes? me to talk oh. about insurance or? Oh yeah. Does that sorry. Come later? Sorry. Yeah. yeah this is this is one of my. I'm a missionary <laughs> about this. Everybody who has car insurance, go home and look at your auto policy. If you're a student on your parents' policy, look at theirs. 
you'll see the first couple of pages is, where it says declarations at the top. Go down, 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 and then uh, underneath the coverages, the initial coverages, there's a section for underinsured, uninsured, and underinsured coverage. You want that to be as high as you can get it. First of all, it's super cheap. So I have a million on my policy, and I pay $20 a month over the rest of the policy. And here's the thing. If you're on your bike and you get hit and you're seriously injured, what if a driver who hits you has $30,000, which is the minimum mm. coverage in North Carolina, which is actually higher than a lot of states? Wow, really? Yeah. Hmm. Um, you know, or what if, they, what if they flee the scene? What if they don't have any insurance? Um, you know, what's going to happen to your medical bills and your, you know, even if you have health insurance, you might have co-pays or deductibles. Mm -hmm. What if you can't work for a while? You know, what about your pain and suffering? <laughs> a lot of people don't care about that, but mm. then they do after, after they have pain and suffer for a long time. Um, yeah, and so... It's easy to remember that after the fact. Right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, most people have car insurance. If you, I mean, most people drive as well. So check your car insurance policy. If you are involved in a crash with a car, even though you're on your bike, you'll be covered by that underinsured coverage. And yeah, most yeah. states have that. I'm not speaking to the no-fault states because I don't really understand how all that works. <laughs> but like New York and Florida, they've got a totally different system, and I think Michigan does too. But, hmm, interesting. Uh, yeah, good. That's what I mean. That's good. To, I I haven't gone back and reviewed that policy. I'm like, yeah, if you don't do be, anything else, please do that. I mean, so that is. I say a, that. Make a note. <laughs> make a note for sure. I say that multiple times every year, and yeah. and I actually have a client right now who is somebody I know pretty well, and he called me and he's like, "Thank God I heard you speak." Because uh, he got hit by an uninsured driver really? and had serious injuries, and he had he had upped his policy. I thought, oh, thank goodness. Okay. But All right. I'm gonna do it. Gonna write that down. On my notes. <laughs> do it. My wife, it's super my easy. Wife will be happy about that. <laughs> and your insurance agent may tell you that no, that's crazy. You're not covered if you're on your bike. They're not. That's not true. Mm. We've, we've represented hundreds of people and their claims against their uninsured. So well, yeah. All right, everybody, we're going to take a quick break from our session. Hopefully, you've learned a thing or two so far. But um, we are here at Recover HQ with Recover founder and president Bill Johnson. Um, want to throw a quick thanks to them for supporting uh, Rec 101 and also being able to bring this to you on YouTube. So, Bill, thank you for for supporting this and for, for doing what you're doing. Tell them a little bit about yeah. Recover, if you don't mind. Well, yeah, th uh, thanks for putting it on. Uh, we hope everybody's enjoying the programming. Uh, a big reason why we want to support things like this is because we're a mission-driven company. Mm -hmm. um, we've always aimed to, to educate and inspire people to be better stewards of the environment. I feel like one of the best ways to do that is to get outside and oh, experience yeah. the outdoors yourself. Yeah. So um, yeah, we hope everybody's enjoying it and, and finding a reason to, to continue to protect this place we all call home. Well, that's exactly right. And let's get back to the action. We've got to figure out how we can get outside and get active and, uh, and just enjoy life a little bit more. So stay tuned. So yes, what are some specific laws here? And again, I, I think, again, we'll do a Q&A at the end here, but obviously I think this is an opportunity to, to, to clearly have a, a little bit of a, a question here, like, hey, what about this particular situation? And I will say before, um, before we dive into this, there is, um, and we put it up here later, there'll be some QR codes that you guys can scan. Obviously, uh, people watching at home, they can scan as well. There's a, um, on the Bike Walk NC uh, site, there's a survey there. And you were telling me about this. And the bicycle-friendly driver quiz yes, or something. Yeah. In the, yeah. And I did that before this. And it was, I mean, again, I, I've been a cyclist for years and years and years. And I you know, feel relatively confident in, in my general knowledge. Mm -hmm. But it was amazing to go through that. And, and like, I was answering stuff incorrectly all over the yeah. place. And I was like, oh, no. I know. Like, yeah. But, but it, was, it was just such a good resource to be like, Oh, okay. And they explain, like, if you answer incorrectly, they'll explain why. And, like, it, it, it's really well done. And so yeah. that was something that, you know, obviously that doesn't dive into the, the level that, you know, that you're working in on a daily basis. But that was just such a great, it took 20 minutes maybe, something mm -hmm. like that. And even just going through it, I'm like, wow, okay. I just, I, I've lo I learned so much more and just, you know, I, did, I wasn't thinking about that stuff in the past or, you know, previously, and I didn't really fully understand what that meant and they explained it perfectly. So we'll, we'll, um, we'll pop that up here a little bit later if you guys want to take that, but definitely would encourage you to do that. Um, but anyway, so again, feel free to kind of maybe ask some questions here. I think 
you know, I'll, I'll do the first one, right? I think this is kind of a, <laughs> a, 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 a fun one, but we've all done it when we're rolling up to a, a red light uh, and we're sitting at the light and we aren't triggering it because, you know, we're not as heavy as a car. And so, you know, my first question, I think I know this answer, but I don't know. If I roll up to the red light and I can't trigger it and there's no other traffic, what legally, what can I or can I not do in that situation? What do you think the answer is? I think, <laughs> I think, because again, clearly I've just passed this quiz with flying colors, but I think that uh, if you come to a police stop and you don't trigger it, then you can use that as, as a blinking red light. Yeah, I mean, that's typically what we tell people. It's not specific in the law. So there is a specific <laughs> law for motorcyclists. Um, really? That but allows not, like, them, separate but, from cyclists. Yeah, hmm. yeah, but I mean, you know, I can't see somebody being cited on that. I mean, what, what else are you supposed to do? You, they can't expect you to just sit there right, right. <laughs> for, for eternity. I'm an impatient, I'm an impatient yeah. guy, too. So. I mean, you could go hit the, you know, the button on the side, mm -hmm. too, if there is one. But, you know, at some point you have to go. So yeah. treat it like a stop sign. So is it? Okay. Or, you know, or blinking. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, all right, what do we got? I know there's some questions out there. What are situations that you guys have been in? And you said, I actually don't know what I'm allowed or not allowed to do here. Yeah. Okay, I feel like I'm a very bad road. <laughs> uh oh, this should be good. <laughs> so, like, do you have to, like, one thing that I do out of protection and for myself is, like, I, maybe this isn't safe, but if it kind of, is, if it is clear but the light's red and you want to get, like, a head start from the cars behind you, mm -hmm. I'll, like, go early. Uh -huh. That's illegal. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Cut, cut the video. Cut the yeah. video. <laughs> yeah, I've never done that. That's yeah. Asking for a friend. You're just thinking about it. Yeah. Sorry. That is, unfortunately. Um, I thought you were going to ask about stop as yield, um, which is a law that some states have passed. It used to be called the Idaho stop, and now mm -hmm. enough states have it that it's just called stop as yield, which is that you can treat a stop sign like a yield because you know, on a bike, you can see a lot better than you can when you're in a car and you can hear, you can sense things a lot more. And so if you come to a stop sign or you're approaching a stop sign and you can see all around that there's nobody else coming, that you can treat it as a yield. But um, we don't have that in North Carolina, oh, unfortunately. So technically, <laughs> technically you have to stop. Yeah. Technically you have to stop. Right. Um, T intersection, um, light coming, you're in the bike lane this way. The bike lane does not have a stop line. It's a stoplight. Okay. Um, the light turns red. The bike lane does not have a stop line. You're in the protected bike lane. Do you have to stop at the stop sign or at that stoplight if it turns red? I'm trying to make sure I'm picturing it right, but uh, as a, it's a light. So you come up on a light, so but it's yeah, you come up on a light. There's a stop lane for traffic. There's yeah. only traffic that's going to come from the right. There's no tra or from the left. There's no traffic that's going to come from my right side. Oh. And it's it's a straight bike lane. Do you have to stop the left street? You have one. It's because you're not going to impede traffic. There's, traffic should yeah. impede you. There's there's. I can tell you that there's nothing that specifically addresses that situation. Okay. So I would say that if you have a uh, any kind of indication that you're supposed to stop, you know, even if it's not. There's just nothing, there's no law, there's there's really no law on what to do in a bike lane at all, right? right? Mm -hmm. So um, you you kind of have to look at what the motor vehicle laws are and kind of common sense, and if you want to be in the right, you should stop. Okay. The, that was a Harrisburg discussion. Okay. <laughs> and, and, and this is why I bike a lot, so this uh, is the yeah, 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 there was, there a lot. So. Gotcha. Yeah. But and what, I don't know the, what, yeah, I've answered that, that whether there's a stop line there or not, you have to stop. Yeah. The, the, whether there's paint or not paint. Just like a crosswalk, there doesn't right. have to be paint to call it a crosswalk. Right. And so you, you you could have a crosswalk at an intersection, even though it's not marked by paint. Right? Unless it is. And you must have wrote what I'm talking about. So. No, well, I just remember that discussion because one guy kept throwing, well, what about this? And I. And I was just throwing statues at it. Yeah, there's, there's, I was going to say, there's some... <laughs> yeah, no, I know. There's some laws that refer to marked crosswalks, so that's... Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. yeah. What about... Um, we've, we've started... Fortunately, we've seen a little bit more of it, but um, within the bike lane kind of world, the um, green paint, right? I think I know what that means, but what does that <laughs> green paint mean to the cyclist as well as to the, to the driver? I mean, I think it's just to bring more awareness to the 
bike lane. Um, but there's, again, there's nothing, there, there's, there's just no law in North Carolina that tells you what to do in a bike lane. Interesting. Yeah. I um, thought it was, I thought, and this is, maybe I'm making stuff up, I thought green was telling the uh, driver that the cyclist has the right of way. No, I think it's just there you go. it's just to make it stand out. Okay. Yeah. Because the cyclists need to be like the Sixth Street cycle track. Yeah. Where the green paint is is where cyclists need to be just yeah. as aware as motorists. Yeah. The driveways. Yeah. I mean that's a really good point of discussion is that bike lane. You know the the danger in bike lanes, and I mean I think it's I think it's good to have bike lanes and protected bike lanes, mm -hmm. um, but the caveat is that. Just because you're in a protected bike lane doesn't mean that you can't <laughs> get hit, protect. right? Yeah, so you yeah. still have to look out for, you know, people coming out of driveways or people turning into driveways or, you know, whatever interactions you might have that you, you know, you might have on a road, you can have them in a protected bike mm -hmm. lane. It's just yeah. nobody's likely to come up from behind and hit you, you know, yeah. so you don't have that. And it gives you a little space, so it kind of tells drivers, like, you know, just leave them alone. But that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be looking for you when they cross. Gotcha. Um, the bike lane traffic. So, mm -hmm. so you still got to keep, you know, you still have to yeah. keep a lookout. Um, what? And I heard this one too, and I, I'm, I want to spot check it. Um, is there a difference between so road signs, a white road sign, versus a yellow road sign? Meaning, like a yellow is just a kind of a suggestion. Yeah, is is white law <laughs> sort of a. Yeah, yeah. So, so like a speed limit. So yeah. you know, speed limit's an example. So if, if it's a white sign that says 30, then that's as the fa fastest you're supposed to drive. But if mm -hmm. it's a yellow 30, then it's like mm, you should probably limit it to like 30 around curb, this corner. Yeah, 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 yeah. So and you, we've yeah. seen it, right? Cyclists can use full lane or whatever it is mm -hmm. versus share the road. I, I, I'm, if I'm picturing it right, cyclists can use a full lane is a white sign, which would mean you know, legally, the cyclist can versus share the road is oftentimes that yellow kind of diamond. You might be reading too much into that. Am I? Okay. <laughs> to the colors, to the colors, yes. Okay. So, um, there's, so there's no difference I mean, between it, a white versus a yellow? On that, not really. I okay. mean, yeah. I mean, share, yeah. Oh boy, this, that could open a whole can of worms. But <laughs> but, uh, but it is a law that bicyclists may use the full lane, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not calling on you anymore. So, <laughs> um, so Anne, I mean, because generally white is regulatory and yellow is is cautionary. Uh, cautionary. Right. Yeah. So, and and so bikes may use a full lane is usually a regulatory sign because there's an action. It, it, it's in the M M U M code. M U C D. M U C D. M -U -C -D. M -U -C -D. Yeah, yeah, it's considered a regulatory sign because it's. Uh, there's a statute behind it where share sure the road is just there's not a statute behind bicyclists may use the full lane that there's really so okay let me yeah. let me clarify <laughs> this so, is what we came here about. <laughs> you just you set this all up so jeff and i would fight right <laughs> um because <laughs> we have yes. some podcasts already it's where working. we've done that we'll put it we'll put it in the notes <laughs> on the youtube yeah so okay but, just, but talking about statutes the only statute the only laws in North Carolina, and this is different in other states, but the only law in, in North Carolina that specifically addresses cycling is helmets, racing, and lights. Hmm. Uh, and That's then the, it? And then the definitions, yeah, and the really? definitions. But yeah, yeah, they're so, huh. I mean, even, even the, you know, so we have a law that tells you where slower moving vehicles ride in a lane, but um, it just, it doesn't reference bicycles, it's any slower moving vehicle, so. Hmm. Um, and sometimes a bicyclist isn't a slower moving yeah. vehicle. If but, you're someone uh, like Jeff back there, nailing 25 can, miles an hour. Can, yeah. Can bicyclists impede traffic? Oh, thank you Sorry. for that one. <laughs> yes, thank you for that one. I do sometimes get calls from people who said the officer cited them with impeding traffic. Um, if you look, there is a statute that uh, prohibits the impeding of traffic, but it imp prohibits motor vehicles from impeding traffic. So that does not, you know, just because you're on a bike going half the speed of, you know, traffic in the road, that does not mean you're impeding traffic. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So. What are some new considerations that you're finding with the prevalence of e-bikes? Oh, yeah. Well, they go faster, <laughs> <laughs> for one thing. Yeah. Um, I got passed by a non-pedaling e-bike on the Greenway, and I thought, is that legal? <laughs> <I need to." laughs> it was more like a motorcycle, like it didn't pedal. Just had, uh, anyway. Yeah, um, e-bikes. Well, I haven't really 
Um, I'm trying to think if I've even had an e-bike case. So, okay, so the only e-bike, only calls that I've gotten from people on e-bikes <laughs> are people that have run into things or fallen on greenways. <laughs> shouldn't, we shouldn't be laughing at all. But I, I mean, it's I'm not really that. funny, but I mean, yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, I don't know if, they're, if that means something or if, you know, that just aren't as many of them yet. But I mean, really, if it's somebody riding an e-bike on the road, it's going to be very similar considerations because it's really not, I don't know, I have an, I have an e-bike and it's um, a big, gigantic, you know, grocery getter kind of bike, right? And uh, yeah, exactly. Um, and, uh, you know, it doesn't, unless I'm going down a hill, it doesn't really go more than 20 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. So I think in terms of what I do, the considerations are, are pretty much the same. So um, I'm trying to think if there would be, because I haven't dealt with it, I'm trying to imagine a scenario that, that would make it different. I mean, I, I think maybe the perception of it would be different. Uh, you know, how jurors or insurance adjusters would look at it. They might look at it as somebody trying to go faster than they should be going or something like that. But uh, yeah, I haven't really, haven't dealt with a lot of that yet. Hmm. I will let you know. Okay. On a road that has a wide shoulder, but that's not a designated bike lane, mm -hmm. you know, you, you tend to gravitate to ride into that to stay out of traffic because of the impeding of vehicles. What sort of risks are you taking legally, mm -hmm. especially in North Carolina with the contributory negligence that you're not really in an official traffic yeah. lane? If somebody right hooks you or some some other incident happens. That is such a great question, and I'm so happy you asked it because I had a huge fight for five years with the Department of Transportation on that very topic. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So it was a case where the um, there was a very narrow, long uh, split from the road and the shoulder, and there was a group riding through it, and. Um, you know, people rode over here all the time and nothing ever happened, but it, because you couldn't really see it. So just one person just got unlucky and the, that, that um, gap just grabbed his tire and threw him over the handlebars and he got pretty badly injured. So anyway, um, they tried to say that he was negligent because he was riding in the shoulder and, and a bicycle, uh, you know, the definition of, bicycles falls under the definitions as a vehicle. I'm floundering with this argument because it was really kind of dumb. Um, <laughs> so I'm trying. Anyway, um, but they were trying to say he was negligent. He should have been riding in this 55 mile an hour road instead of the shoulder for that. You know, it was like a one mile stretch where they were connecting two country roads, and uh, you know, um, it was not a designated bike lane. But you know, there was all sorts of so there was all sorts of evidence that was up in the mountains. And one of the things was that. They, there was a Blue Ridge bike plan, so there was a plan put together about like 2012 or something like that where all these different entities, including NCDOT, got together and decided how can we improve bicycling in Western North Carolina. And one of their suggestions was to, um, you know, make the shoulders more rideable, you know, to, to clean them up and stuff like that. So like, how can you say that it's negligent to ride mm -hmm. the shoulder when you're also suggesting that that's what people do? So it could be a fight, yes, but you know, you're, I mean, if I'm going along a 55 mile an hour road and there's a huge shoulder, that's where I'm gonna be riding, so. So what if, and we've all seen this, what if in that either a bike lane or shoulder, or whatever it is, with, you know, debris, broken glass, I mean, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. What's the, I mean, as a cyclist, am I able to get into the, you know, get into the lane, get out of the bike lane for because of all that debris and get into the, the, yeah. the main roadway? Yeah, well, in North Carolina, you don't have to be in the bike lane anyway, so you're totally That's fine okay, doing yeah. that. But you just want to make sure that you're predictable when you do it, mm -hmm. right? So if you're riding along in the bike lane, there's debris, and you got to jut out. If you can't look to make sure there's no car coming, you better just stop. Probably, yeah. <laughs> you know, so, um, but, but yeah, you have absolutely, you know, and, and that's one of the things, if, if you look at the ride guide, one of the things we talk about is the whole, uh, you know, ride far as far you know slower moving vehicles to stay as far right as practicable well, what does that mean mm -hmm. right and uh, so you know some would argue that oh you got to stay all the way to the right but really there's a lot of reasons why you would not do that mm -hmm. and so you have to look at every situation and think well you know okay if it's a huge say 15 foot wide road then you could 
and you know it's clean along here, then you could ride all the way to the right because there's room for a bicycle and, and a car. Mm -hmm. um, but if there's debris or if it's a narrow road and there's a danger that somebody's going to try to squeeze past you between mm -hmm. an oncoming car and uh, and you and, and knock you over in the process, then you probably you know you want to control the lane. Yeah. So you know that's where taking some a course, a safety course, or um, you know, riding with people that are more experienced and, and learning all those different considerations mm -hmm. comes in handy. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So. Um, well, Deb, if you don't mind hitting the next slide, because I think that's a good, you talked about the, the ride guide there, Ann. And so, oh, wow. you know, here's three resources. I mean, feel free to share if there's others, but, you know, Bike Walk NC, which we talked about um, mm -hmm. earlier, just a phenomenal resource here in, in North Carolina, obviously. Um, also in that is the bicycle safety quiz that I talked about earlier. Again, that, that was just really kind of interesting for me to go through again. You know, clearly I don't know everything after going through that. So there's a lot of good in information in there and, and, and the ride guide. So if you want to kind of maybe expand on that a little bit the ride more. Guide, yeah. yeah. Um, so again, well, you'll see these up on the, the YouTube page as well, or we can kind of go back to this afterwards, but I think these are just, you know, three good resources to be aware of to at least start with and then kind of continue on from there. Yeah, well, I wrote the ride guide back in, I think the first one was 2018, and then I updated it in 2020. And is that right? Maybe it was earlier than 2018. But anyway, um, before that, there was um, Department of Transportation or Department of Motor Vehicles had, had a book out that it was called the Bicycle and Pedestrian Guide. And it was kind of funny because they just took the motor vehicle laws and stuck them in this book and replaced the word motor vehicle with the word bicycle or you know find, i mean it was, find and replace it in was the word document. totally yeah. a joke yeah i mean it was it was really wrong in a lot of and they've taken it down okay. um but when i saw that i thought and that was the only resource at the time and so i thought well somebody needs to because we don't have specific laws in north carolina for bicyclists like somebody needs to go to look at all these laws find the ones that affect bicyclists the most and interpret them so that was me <laughs> and then the ride guy's a little booklet i don't have any hard copies but it's on it's online um it's like a little i don't know 40 page small booklet but it has all those things that we're talking about about lane usage and what are those considerations um you know just mostly with the really basic stuff that that comes up regularly cool so again uh, feel free to grab those we can we can um uh, put this back up a little bit later if we want but yeah anna so educating ourselves as individuals that ride bikes mm -hmm. so we know that we're law-abiding, know our rights, know how to ride on the roads. In your experience, when we're representing individuals, have you noticed changes like with the DMV and how they potentially integrate how to treat pedestrians, cyclists, an individual with a child in a stroller crossing yeah. the crosswalk. How are they educating people that are getting driver's licenses to incorporate that in there, saying that when you do see a cyclist on the road or an e-bike or something, how we need to be mindful as drivers, what are we learning? Right. What are we teaching them as drivers? <coughs> are you seeing an uptick in that? I feel like things have kind of gone backwards. Uh, you know, I mean, didn't didn't they take away um, driver training in school a few years back? Maybe it's, maybe somebody said they brought it back. I can't remember, but um, I know some I, people had to pay for their kids had to, to pay drivers. for it. Yeah, yeah. I remember there was a big thing when they they took it away, and I thought, oh, that's really not yeah, very that's smart. Not a, not a good move. Um, I know there's been a push to get more questions. My understanding is that there are you know a small handful of of bicycling related questions and it rotates around the test and so there's you might get one on a test something like that so I don't I don't think there's been any change in that and, and I know there's there's been a pushes periodically because I've, I've seen people try to do that um, and I don't know just with changes in administration and things like that I, I don't think that that has I don't think that's changed um, Over the we've, years. Guys, we've got about five minutes here. I want to, I have one quick question, okay. but we've got five <laughs> minutes. We've got to let uh, Annie get out of here. Um, obviously, there's been a big change in just the size of vehicles over the years. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, the Volkswagen Beetle is this big, right? Mm -hmm. Now we've got these huge, you know, 15 passenger, all this kind of stuff. How is that kind of, 
has the law kind of taken some of that into account? Or is it the same law for a four foot, whatever, a much smaller vehicle, same laws for now, this is a much, much bigger vehicle. Has there been any change? No. With law? Or is it all just kind of? Well, there, there's no change in the law. Uh, I can tell you that, you know, in, in my advocating for somebody who's been hit by one of these big mm -hmm. uh, cars that, you know, I, I definitely point that out. I mean, yeah. if you're driving this big giant thing and you have more responsibility, yeah. you know, you need to take the responsibility to, to know how to drive it. And, you know, often your uh, line of sight's not as good, mm -hmm. things like that. So, um, so it changes in how I present a case, but yeah. in terms of the law, it's okay, so I haven't I seen any changes. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, again, couple, uh, maybe one, maybe two more questions if you guys have any. So we'll let, we'll, we'll yeah. let Ann get out of here. Okay. Um, you mentioned in one of the other topics about taking control of the lane. Yeah. This is a constant beef between me and some of our friends that yeah. ride together. Um, when, when should you do that versus not? Oh, that's a good. It is a really great question. It's a question that's hard for me to answer in you know just a few minutes because there's so there's so many different considerations, and you almost have to take like a day or two class to kind of get a feel for be taught them and then get a feel for them on the road. But but I will say, so I'm also licensed in Utah, and they have a, a much more specific law about you know the the we we call it the far right law or whatever. So. It, they still say that you're supposed to ride as far right as practicable, but they list all these different considerations. And I list them out in the ride guide too. Uh, you know, things that you should look at. Like obviously, if there's parked cars along the side, you wanna ride outside of the door zone. Um, you know, lane width is a consideration. The speed of cars is a consideration. Um, you know, debris in the road, things like that. So a lot of it comes from experience and, you know, riding a lot, so. What, what's your debate? They're saying you should hug the white line? No, we've got some people that we've been riding with that, you know, if, if it's a, a narrow road mm -hmm. and we hit a spot with a lot of traffic, the bulk of us will just, we'll find a safe space and pull over just to let the traffic right. by. But some of them are just like, oh, we can take the lane. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you got to use common sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you got to, I mean, when, you know, when I think about con lane control, I think about, you know, improving my visibility for one thing, right? So if I'm, say I'm going down East Boulevard and there's cars coming in and out of parking lots and driveways and everything, there, you think about if, if you're in your car and pulling out a parking lot, where is your eye going? It's not going all the way to the side of the road in the bike lane. Mm -hmm. So in situations like that, I may tend to go out more into the road and, but I'm not doing it just for the purpose of, oh, I can take the lane, you know? So, uh, you know, there are definitely times where I'm going to, you know, make room, if I can safely make room, I will make room. You know, it just, I don't know, it just kind of makes more sense, so, yeah. Can you want to give a plug for Cycle Savvy and LAB? Go for it. Our cycling. Um, take the courses that are available because lane control, a lot of people think lane control is just get in the lane. Mm -hmm. And that's like Ann says, that's, that's part of it, but that's not all of it. And mm -hmm. knowing when to release traffic that's built up behind you, knowing when to take that lane, where to improve your visibility. So in Charlotte, we have, you can take the LAB Smart Cycling courses, or you can take Cycle Savvy courses. Those are both offered in Charlotte. Mm -hmm. And we may try, if I can, we'll try to remember that to put that in the in the caption on the YouTube page, so people can link off to that and kind of yeah. check out some of those resources. If you have children, send them to Charlotte Bike Camp because they'll yeah. learn all that stuff yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> well, awesome. Well, um, want to be respectful of your time, Anne. Thank you so yeah, so much for coming you. out. Thanks um, for having if, me. If we can have a little round of applause, for Anne. Yeah. She's got to she's got to ride off and and uh, and watch her son play pitch in baseball tonight. So yeah, um, we'll see if he's pitching. But yeah, awesome. Well, thank you very <laughs> yeah, much. Yeah, thanks Appreciate for having it me. It's really fun. Yeah, and we'll um um I'll stick around. Here. I'm not gonna be able to answer any of the specific questions here, um, but we will we will roll into a, a few more raffle prizes and stuff. So we'll uh, we'll stick around and talk about human power movement a little bit. And uh, and uh, I don't know if Jeff's sticking around or if he's heading out as well, but um. um We'll be hanging out. So thank you guys for coming out. Thanks, Adam. Thank you. Yeah, thank thanks you so much. much. Appreciate Great. it. Thanks. Let's do it again.
so much more to cover. See you on the road. Yeah. We've got uh, some bike cleaner from Finish Line. That's the, I use that. It's just a little spray on and you just hose it off. It's awesome. Instant coffee, that is a game changer in my opinion. Um, let's see what else we got. Oh, and we got some human power movement stuff. So, Miss Deb, feel free. The first one's going to be uh, finish line. Bike cleaner, he's not here. It's my brother in law. He was supposed to be here. All right, uh, Tony Bergio. Boom. Oh, you guys are all walking away with something. Heck yeah. Brian Hodgnacki. Brian, here you go, young man. Oh, I'm going to throw this at you. Right good cleaner. catch, good catch. All right. Dirty. Next up, yeah, I don't know. Hey, I'm not judging. Next up, uh, Instant Coffee from Black Coffee Roasting Company. You can read it out. Christine Weber, where'd she go? <laughs> <laughs> hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't think you need coffee. I don't think you need it. All right, next up, we're going to do a human power, human power movement bandana. All right, and we need that excitement, whoever wins this one. Michael Chisholm? Michael Chisholm. No? No? Good. Get him out of here. Get him out. Get him out of here. What is it? Oh, yeah. There he goes. There you are, my friend. I actually do. I wear that around my neck when I cycle. It kind of keeps the sun off me, and it still kind of breathes a little bit. Yeah, I feel like I'm a cowboy, you know? I want to be. Want to be cowboy. Get out of here. <laughs> tell, tell her that she missed it. Yeah. All right, what's this next one? This is for, uh, oh, this is for another bike wash. Emily. Emily, yeah, there you go. Nice. You guys can share. <laughs> Double win. All right, next up is another coffee. Christine, you're not in the running for this one at all. You can't. Yes. Awesome. There you go. All right, last one, human power movement hat. Let's see. All right, who hasn't won anything yet? No? Nothing? Nice. All right, last winner. Not here either. This is fantastic. There's two more. All right, I'm not going to look. Thank you, Ann. Appreciate it. See you guys. Yes. Awesome. There you go. Very cool. See you guys. Thank you. That's right. Yeah. Don't let, don't let her get lost. Thank you, sir. Good to see you. Did we get the microphone for man? Okay, cool. We're going to listen to their, we can listen to their conversation as they leave. Yeah. 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 Well, awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for coming out. We're doing, um, if you guys, we got some merch sales and all that kind of stuff. We're actually doing a, um, uh, a pre-sale on all recover merch too with human power movement. So I'll hang out for a little bit. I'm probably gonna drink a, I'm probably gonna drink a few more beers tonight before we uh, before we get out of here. But um, thank you guys for coming out. All right, thank you guys for tuning in. Hopefully you've learned a couple things from today's Recreation 101 session. Uh, before we sign off, we are here at Recover HQ with Bill Johnson of Recover. Um, huge thanks once again for them to uh, to support this whole series as well as give you the tools, knowledge, and understanding to get out and enjoy nature in different ways. Yeah, well, first off, thank you for, for putting this on uh, in Human Power Movement. But uh, thank, thanks to all of you who, who mm -hmm. participated in, uh, and took part in Outdoor Rec 101. Um, being the title sponsor is really important to us as a brand. Um, you know, as we talk a lot about sustainability, we really think of it as really the constant pursuit to do better. Mm -hmm. We're always trying to improve yeah. our systems, the way we do things, and just give more people access and exposure to, yeah. to do things the right way. And we yep. feel like Outdoor Rec 101 really speaks to that. Mm -hmm. So we're really excited for, for all these new outdoor enthusiasts who've, uh, who've been completed the, the class and, uh, <laughs> and look forward to, to seeing you guys out there. Um, so, so thanks again for putting it on yep. and, and thanks to all of you for participating.